Okay, this uh, snowflake eel you're looking at is uh, at least 14 years old, probably more like 15. It's about three feet long. I'll try to get him out of here a little bit when I'm feeding him, try to get him to get out more. You can get a better look at him. So, I go and I got him, he was about a foot long. And now he's about three feet long, very thick. So uh, he's been through a lot in here. This originally was set up as a shark tank where I was going to have the eel and a, uh, and a small bamboo shark in here. And the shark lasted about a year and then he uh, panicked. I walked over here too quick and then he, uh, he had gotten pretty big. He would gotten probably close to 30 inches. That was about as big as they're going to get. And he banged his head on the top he just like panicked when I walked over too fast got an infection and died but this guy's kept on going so sometimes he's been in this tank by himself for several years other times I put other things in here problem is unlike what it says that snowflake eels are reef safe with caution really not reef safe he he's eaten everything I put in here that's how I have this mangrove snapper in here because he's just way too big for him to handle but he's had about everything else in here oh he's trying to disappear so let me see if I can get them out of here a little bit so you can't say snowflake eels aren't hardy they are very hardy 14 years old he might outlive me here he comes here he comes here he comes come on buddy come on you can come out a little more come out come on out a little more come on out a little more oh there we go I'm gonna see if I can get him to come out to take a second piece. He probably will, he usually will. So anyway, this is what I normally feed him. I have, I just buy a live shrimp and I freeze it, or I get uh, like small uh, bait fish, uh, sardines, uh, shads, whatever at the bait store frozen, and I'll feed those. So very easy to feed. Not not very finicky at all. He's taken squid before, but that's a rarity when I have that. The mangrove snapper is not eating out of the stick yet. Here he comes. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Come on, you can come out a little more. Come out a little more. There we go. All right. Then I'm going to drop the mangrove snapper. And mangrove snapper I caught at the beach. Uh, he's definitely grown some. Let's see. Watch him come and get it. He's, he's still kind of shy though. He may not come up here to get this with me here. Okay. So I don't know if he will. I got the shrimp is over here. I'm trying to get it out. Yeah. Of course it's being difficult. There we go. Okay. I'm going to back up a little bit. We'll see if the mangrove will come back and get the shrimp. The shrimp is right there. Of course the eel is still eyeing it. I wonder if maybe he'll come out too, so we'll see what happens. If the eel comes out, we'll watch him. Never giving him a name. These are very easy to care for. They're good for fowler tanks, but I mean, when they get big, you definitely have to have uh, bigger fish in here or they will start disappearing. So I've had fish that were fairly big in here, triggers, smaller triggers, um, wrasses, and they all disappeared. I mean, they, they just disappeared. So the mangrove snapper is really the best thing uh, that I've had in here. I've also had a uh, pinfish in here that he didn't bother. It was big enough. Then I got rid of it, then I put some other pinfish in here, like two or three of them in a group, and they got ick, and they died. So, and the eel was not affected by the ick at all. So there was definitely ick in here, parasites, and it didn't seem to affect him at all. So I thought that was kind of interesting. So they don't seem to be, they seem to be pretty resistant to ick. There you get to see the whole body. Well, look at that. Here, getting a good look. Because he doesn't come out a lot. He's pretty, he stays in his rock piles here. Let's see if the mangrove snapper comes out comes over and gets a shrimp. I've eaten lots of his brothers and sisters. And uh, if this eel ever dies, I don't know, I'll probably release this mangrove snapper back to the beach where I got him. 
and uh, I don't know what I'll do with this tank. So you gonna come and get it? Come on, buddy. He wants to. He's hungry. Come and get it. Come and get it. <laughs> Maybe I'll move it over a little bit farther away from me. Let's see if I can get him. There we go. Maybe that'll entice him. So he's definitely a very aggressive eater, but he's not used to me being right here. I usually just drop it in and kind of walk away a little bit. This is an acrylic aquarium. It's a 125 gallon six foot by two foot um, it's kind of a shallow one which I bought at a uh, aquarium show in Tampa and this has been going on this this aquarium has been going for you know 14 years he's still eyeing it the eel he's gone for the night you're not going to see him again here he comes he's coming to get it he's coming to get it boy he's spooky so I'll show you the rest of the setup once he eats here. <laughs> Boy, he's suspicious. He doesn't want to eat right in front of me. He's trying to get it. Oh, gosh, that was so close. Thought he was going to get it. Very suspicious. Come on, buddy. You can do it. Come on, buddy. He's blowing it away. You're moving it towards me. So I don't want to put anything else in this tank just because, uh, you know, the amount of the amount of waste. You know, these I'm feeding these one, you know, about a shrimp each. So about two shrimp or two small, uh, uh, small little minnows uh, a day, and you know even 125 gallons. That's still a lot of waste. Come on, you want it? You know you want it. Well, there you go. There it is. There it is. Come on, you know you want it. <laughs> he'll come back he's hungry he wants it it's getting a little farther away look it's moving that way so I think he's more likely to grab it now it's moving on him yeah I just caught him uh, surf fishing there were some rocks uh, on Gasparilla Island right next to the beach and uh, there's some mangrove snapper in there usually when they're there and that's where I got him. And I've caught several other mangrove snapper and kept them that were bigger. He was too small to, to eat. There you can kind of see his markings too as he's coming out into the light. This is a Fowler tank. I don't have special lights. These are just regular, uh, just regular lights. There's not, they're not reef lights. Okay, I can never think of the words when I'm doing filming for some reason. So there's nothing special for a, a fowler where you don't have coral. All you gotta do is light the tank. You don't need, uh, you know, light for the coral. You don't worry about it. So it's just enough light to light it the way you want. So that's all. So it's just a regular fluorescent tubes, uh, not power compact. Just regular fluorescent is all we have in here. Okay, come on, buddy. You know you want it. You know you want it. He wants me to leave before he eats. That's what he wants me to do. There he's going. He's going. He's going. He's going. These things got teeth too. I've uh, handled these fish before. Oh, there he goes. He grabbed it. He got it. <laughs> I've handled these fish before and I've accidentally gotten bitten on them on the finger when I was trying to remove them and their teeth are so sharp that's why they're called snappers of course now this is hooked up I'll show you the setup here 
Uh, I originally got this, I bought both of these at the same time. This is a 30 gallon, okay? It's got the footprint of a 55 gallon, but as you can see, it's shallow. It's got a 30 gallon. And I originally had this uh, plan to be a uh, refugium, which is what I'm using it for now. I have a bunch of extra rocks in there, so I don't have to have as many rocks in here. And so that's what it's for. It's a simple gravity fed. There's a small pump there on the end. Pumps the water uh, up, okay, into the tank. And then as you can see, I have a couple of PVC pipes. I have two, just in case one would get blocked. I thought I should have an extra. And gravity, I just have it propped up uh, above so that gravity drops the water in. And that's how it's designed. So when I had the shark, I had even less rock in here because the sharks need a lot of more sandy areas. So there was much less rock. I had this large rock pile and a smaller rock pile there and then everything else was open. So I have a lot more rock in here now uh, when I had the shark, but I decided to add shark. And I've experimented and do all kinds of stuff with this over the years and this just seems to work the best the way I've got it now. So Okay, now besides our food gym, just wanted to point out the other equipment. I just have one large pump that's a several hundred gallon per hour pump uh, that circulates it. And then you have the water coming in, draining in from this tank uh, through the PVC pipe from the very small pump. And that's really the only water movement I have in here. This, since this is a fowler, I don't have to worry about corals or anything. And that's really the only uh, equipment to speak of. Uh, water changes, I do very little. Since I have this large refugium with all the extra rock and all the rock in here, and since I'm only feeding two large fish, okay, I mean, they, they definitely make some waste, but and I don't have too much light on. I have a minimum amount of light. If I notice that there's any sort of algae starting, I will turn off one of the lights for several weeks, and the algae seems to just die back. So I don't, I don't mess with that. So right now I got two Okay, I've got two fluorescent bulbs going in here, which gives a good amount of light. Sometimes I just have one going. Um, I'll put it kind of more in the middle. Um, so if you don't overdo the light, you know, that's another key to preventing the algae. So that's the setup, you know, it's very, very basic. You know, this, uh, you know, was pretty easy to do. It's pretty simple, you know, I know it isn't pretty. Uh, well, what this is built on, as you can see, there's concrete blocks there. So what I did is I got a bunch of concrete blocks and some very thick plywood. You can see how thick those are. I have two of them stacked on. And so is this. This is two pieces of plywood stacked on. And again, there's several rows of concrete blocks stacked under, which is holding it. So that's what I did, okay, to create uh, the stand for these, and especially this. I wasn't sure about the weight, so I probably overcompensated since I have two uh, two of these and you know it's held well so I obviously obviously what I did was plenty more maybe one of them would be enough one of these uh, pieces of uh, wood frame was enough but I did two and concrete blocks to get it to the height I want so it's worked it's not pretty okay it's kind of ghetto but it works there he's out it shows his color so anyway might show this again when we go collect. Uh, I go out to the flats and collect uh, with little hand nets. Uh, I try to look for snails, and so you know I often get little um, hermit crabs, which I'll add to the aquariums, or I also get uh, oftentimes little ghost shrimp, grass shrimp in there. I'll put a lot of those in here, and then they they go crazy for that, walking around or swimming around looking for them. So anyway, this is. Uh, 14 year old tank. It's been established a long time. So I got a mangrove snapper and a very large snowflake eel. So if you have any questions, let me know. And uh, if you're interested in uh, supporting the channel, I'll put a link to some of my recommended aquarium products in the description box below. So we'll see you later.